Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I have decided I will vlog daily from my country Ukraine since the start of this awful war with Russia. And in my daily videos I try to update you on the important real life situations in my country Ukraine and of course I'm always glad to answer your questions and to clarify some facts from our history, culture, background or whatever interests you. And today I want to speak about Putin's visit to one of the important Asian summits that took place in Uzbekistan just a couple of days ago. All of that is pretty important for us Ukrainians as we have to observe the attitudes to the Russian dictator in the world and to try to uh, strengthen our allies and to weaken the allies of Russia. Well, first of all, very often when I talk about our country friends, friends that countries that are our friends, I think of democratic countries that have their problems, but at the same time respect human life, choice, freedom of speech, and fight for the normality in the world. And at the same time, there are lots of countries that are run by authoritarian leaders and traditionally they support each other and try to demonstrate that their choice lack of freedom, total control, censorship, these are normal things for a country. And uh, Russia traditionally tried to build friendships and alliances with the countries like that. Uh, we were very attentive at the start of this war, uh, at the relations of China and Russia. And I'm convinced that Putin started this war because somehow he realized that China has nothing against that. I'm not saying they supported this war, but at the same time, they, do, they did not advise Putin to stop because he is very much dependent on China. And I think that in future, Russia will be, uh, a part of Russia will be swallowed by China and taken over. China is a very shrewd, if it's possible to say, a partner that does not want to take direct military actions or to behave like a bully but at the same time they observe very attentively and they plan for their dominance for centuries it's not it's okay for they are not in a hurry so asia central asia is a country is a i'm sorry is a region where russia wants to dominate and it tried to dominate for a certain period of time because many of uh, Central Asian countries were former Soviet republics. That's why uh, Putin felt this is his zone of influence and for decades visiting Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan was more of a parade, total respect and so on. Uh, that's why the way he was met there demonstrate that he is losing his positions not only in the democratic world but also among the countries that are also run by totalitarian leaders and that is important for uh, years he was trying to create an image of uh, a masculine leader of um, the strongest man in the world or at least in his part of the world and he was working on that and of course, there are leaders like him, starting from Xi Jinping and finishing with Erdogan, who respect this aggressive masculinity. Um, and at the same time, they are just like in packs of wolves or something. They are very attentive to their partners. And when they see weaknesses, they stop respecting. I'm not saying this is good for a country, for a democratic society, but this is the way totalitarian, authoritarian states are run. And what they respect, they respect power, strength, uh, success. And if they see failures, they very quickly change their attitudes. And I'm really happy to notice that the attitude to Putin changed tremendously within this half a year. Not because these uh, leaders started to respect Ukraine, well maybe they did, but they started to disrespect Putin because of his failures. Of course he was pretending to be the strongest leader, to have the second strongest army in the world. He was perhaps telling his allies that this will be a blitzkrieg and in a couple of days Kiev will be occupied by Russians and become one of the Russian cities. But he failed in everything and now people are mocking at, uh, him and uh, his army. And in general, uh, they saw this authoritarian leader saw that he is 
weak. He is not that strong as he pretended to be. And as a matter of fact, they react very quickly. So from one point of view, we may say that China and other Central Asian countries are still more tolerant to Russia than other countries of the world. But at the same time, they start to demonstrate this disrespect. And what happens? Well, first of all, when you look at this meeting that took place in Uzbekistan a couple of days ago, you will notice how they met uh, the president of China, the leader of China, Xi Jinping, with parades, with dances, with lots of people wearing military, wearing national costumes. And it was a separate event, a separate holiday or something. And then when Putin came, they simply rolled the carpet, no people were present, and uh, he was not even given flowers. Another thing that was traditional for Putin uh, to be late. This was his form to demonstrate superiority and he enjoyed the fact that so many people waited for him for a long period of time. And here in Uzbekistan, he had to wait for us leaders. It all started with uh, like the uh, president of Kyrgyzstan who made Putin wait. Then it was a president of Iran that made him wait. And then uh, it seems to me a uh, prime minister of India, if I'm not mistaken, or anyway, leader, political leader from India and a president from Azerbaijan. And uh, uh, these are many different leaders, four or five that made Putin wait. And uh, the more he waited, the more inadequate his behavior became. He started to uh, use gestures. He wanted to influence journalists to make them say it. But these were all the signs that he feels totally uncomfortable because like a couple of years ago, it was impossible to imagine that, let's say, a president of uh, Kyrgyzstan will make him wait. But now when they see that, Putin is losing his positions on the battlefield in Ukraine, that the Russian army is not as strong as he spoke about, that he is not respected in the civilized world, that he is laughed at, that he is getting weaker and weaker, that maybe soon Russia will protest against him. So he loses this grasp and he is no more seen as a super macho leader uh, he was a couple of years ago. And I think this is very important. And in Ukraine, we often say a cherry on a cake. I don't know if you have a similar phrase, which means like an additional sign of uh, something. So here, a special, like the last drop of disrespect that Putin received in Uzbekistan uh, was um, uh, the way he sat on some of the meetings and he was sitting on a very low sofa together with the president of Belarus, Lukashenko, and for example, the president of uh, Turkey, Erdogan, got a very high chair and it was pretty visible that the leader is Erdogan, not Putin. A couple of years ago, the situation was totally different. So, of course, when you look at the way uh, leaders of Turkey and China were met in Uzbekistan and how um, neglected Putin was, these are very strong uh, signs. And in Asia, uh, people are very careful with the way they demonstrate their attitude. So here we may say it is not a mistake, it is not one uh, misunderstanding or something. This is a very carefully planned uh, strategy to demonstrate that Putin is no more a leader in this region, that he is no more one of the strongest in Asia, and his plans to build super country after he invades Ukraine, to continue influencing Asia, Central Asia, all of these plans will fail. And uh, there are other leaders who decide what will be in Asia and maybe what will be in Russia after Putin's regime fall. And it will fall because even if China, Turkey do not respect all the sanctions or somehow help Russia to uh, go through this time, still they see that Putin is uh, not that strong. Still they see that he has already lost this war on the very first day he began it.
And this is important. So if you haven't checked that and uh, you hate putting the way I do, I greatly advise you to look at a couple of videos and at a couple of photos from the Uzbekistan Security Summit where leaders of 15 different Asian countries were present and Putin did not manage to demonstrate his authority anymore. Anyway, these are good news for Ukrainians and once again we are very grateful for our allies who demonstrate love and respect not only to our government and our president but also to all of Ukrainian uh, people. Thank you for becoming my patrons and buying me coffee. I greatly uh, value the support you provide. Also, I invite you to watch our new series from uh, our new project Soviet Myths Debunked and the new episode about traveling to the USSR. Was it possible and is it somehow similar to the situation in modern Russia? And of course, thank you for standing with Ukraine. As this war continues, we need your support and understanding. Slava Ukraini!